it is such a special place. You can be from anywhere in the world and you'll be welcomed with open arms. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Breaking Bread, the Birmingham food podcast that takes you behind the scenes of the most exciting food scene in the UK. We're your hosts, he's Carl. All right. I'm Liam. That's me. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I thought, that's the quickest we've done. That's the quickest I've done that, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I feel good about that. You just don't see the outtakes. This N- doesn't no. just happen like that. Stay tuned for outtakes though. <laughs> now you mention outtakes, I'm going to put one out, you know, at the end. Oh, yeah, big reel of the outtakes. There's <laughs> yeah, loads of them. So. We've got loads, yeah. yeah. This has whole, been a journey. <laughs> it's a couple of hours of outtakes. Yeah. yeah. So today's episode, we are, we've filmed it in the church. It's with the owners of the church, Ed, Neil. Yeah. The church, most one of the most legendary pubs. Yeah. So obviously we talk about the church and the legacy that's left behind. We talk about starting Tiger Bites Pig. And all the other food businesses have just gone on and nailed every one of them. It's yeah. been brilliant. And not even just the stuff they've done. It's about yeah. the legacy of the church. It's yeah. on who else has been there and what, what they've gone on to do. Yeah. And then the challenges then that they've faced along the way, because they go deep into that. Like, I know we filmed it a little while ago, but when watching back, you're like, oh, man, they went through a struggle, man. Yeah, they didn't and, know. Yeah, and obviously we talk about how they came to Birmingham, because they're both obviously not from Brum. And uh, the jobs that they worked at. They worked at some cool places along the way, especially Ed. Like, brilliant story. But before we get awesome. into that, we'll do our uh, usual thanks to our sponsors, who without them, we couldn't do, be doing this. Well, we wouldn't, wouldn't be filming us. it anyway. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to <laughs> see us. Obviously, first up, the brilliant Burning Barn Run, big friends of ours. I, I say that every time because they genuinely are friends of ours, yep. Catherine, Harry. When we haven't recorded for a while, they're usually the first people that message, where's the podcast, Logan? Where's the podcast? <laughs> where's we need the podcasts. podcast. Yeah. So massive thanks to them. Obviously, locally made, craft rum, award winning. Yeah. Should definitely mention that. You love the rum. Big Smoked fan. is your favorite. I, lo- I just love the story. I love the brand. I love the people. So massive thank you to Burning Barn Rum. Our second sponsor, Easy Food, part of the Big Easy family, but made here in Birmingham. Their story was incredible as well. If you go back and listen, how big they became part of the Easy family was unreal. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, they're here to help businesses, food delivery businesses. Forget about paying forty percent to them big corporate apps. Just pay them one pound fifty flat fee. Whether someone spends a hundred pound or tenner, it's one pound fifty. Simple, done. No getting ripped off. That's easy food. Links for both our sponsors are in the show notes. Um, go check them out. Do us a favor. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So we've all our sponsorship out of the way. How first you been doing, first, man? First and first. This is a nice t-shirt. Oh, mate. Do you know what? You got in there before me. I was gutted. As soon as I seen uh, the Punks and Chantons were Arts on Markets at King's Eve the last time, I was like, right. Got a few intros to film, got a few podcasts left to film on getting this t shirt. How good's Artisan and Market as well? Oh, I love Artisan and Pip, legend. Like, yeah, what she, what nailed, she's done it? there, like, it's getting bigger and better all the time as well. It's the best market. Yeah, it is the best market. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to annoy it. Don't come after us, other markets. Yeah, if you've got other markets, I like the farmer markets. I like all too. markets, but <laughs> it's my favorite market. I'll yeah, Artisan's like, got a vibe, market. man. York Road just has a vibe. Yeah, Zoe's got chances. another classy. Everything is better in them. I wore this by accident to Clarkson's farm the other day. <laughs> and uh, forgetting I was leaving Birmingham because I don't do that often. And uh, I did get a lot of people like giving it love, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate. Brum, everything is better in Birmingham. <laughs> I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> get in, mate. I didn't realise that is so close to it. It's only an hour, yeah. I thought it would be hour. miles away. Yeah, it feels a long way, obviously, because of the uh, countryside vibes. But you can get it faster, I think. I just... Anyway, this isn't about clocks as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we were getting onto that then. Man, I like your t-shirt. Yeah, my, one of my favourite bands, Pig, 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 Pigs. I like the t-shirt like the right more than the now. band. I like the band, but I like yeah. the t-shirt t-shirt more. designed, local artist, works at Motorcycles, Matt, Matt Gardner. Yeah, Dirt Wizard on Instagram, legend. Shout also incredible to. guitarist. Yeah. 
Yeah, really good. I love it. I think he's doing a few more bits for him now as well. Mm. I think it's my new favourite tea, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Getting some wear anyway. Yeah, mate, we better start talking about some food. <laughs> People are tuning in for yeah, a food podcast. Not, not the, we're not just fashion eaters, <laughs> Not just you fashion. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so where have you been eating, mate? Where have I been eating? That is a very good question. Oh, I'll tell you where I've been eating. And I eat here a lot. So this is no surprise to anybody. But I've not mentioned them this season, so I'm getting putting a little asterisk. I don't care. Early bird, mate. King's Eve, early bird. Yo, I've been there recently as well. I hadn't been, Incredible. in fairness, I hadn't been for a long time. I hadn't even been since they took over next door and made it bigger, which, just so you know, it doesn't make it any easier to get a table there on a Saturday. There's no, still a massive queue, mate. It's ridiculous. But I had this sausage, they called it a sausage patty or something, but mm, like it was that. nothing. For a start, the bun was a croissant, which was incredible. Really sharp, nice cheese on it, cheddar, mature cheddar. And then a sweet onion caramel, and it's just, there was no sausage. It was um, black pudding bum, no haggis bonbons, mate. The whole thing worked so well. And then I got some of them salt. The only reason I went really was because I wanted the salt and chili uh, hash brown kind of bits. Them hash the browns ends. are insane. These are just the ends, the crispy bits, oh, yeah, and there was salt and chili. Oh my god! And then the peanut barbecue sauce on the side. Yeah, that's oh, mental. Wow, man, I, I just. I'm obsessed with that place. Yeah, I went and I had the full Spanish. Yeah, he's... It's one of the best breakfasts I've ever had. Like, it's so big as well. <laughs> like, it's, it's huge. Everything is big there. I think I was... I think I went for my birthday and I just had... I think I had about four different coffees as well. <laughs> <laughs> Left them full and buzzing. <laughs> yeah, I ran home. <laughs> <laughs> Where about you, mate? Eating anywhere good lately? Ah, oh, we went and tried Albatross, oh. Alex Cloud's new place with uh, his partner, Rachel. Um, yeah. I don't know why this took me by surprise so much, because obviously we love the wilderness. Yeah, big fans. And then like, this place come up and was like, yeah, we'll go there. We'll, we'll try it out. And it was on the radar for a while. And then we went. And I'm not joking. I love, when I go to a taster menu, my favorite taste mm. course on the taster yeah. menu is usually like the raw sort of fish. Ceviche, or, it's ceviche yeah. or tartare or something yeah. along them lines. And this was like 13 courses of just that course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to like fish to go there. Really. You do really have to like fish. Because every course is fish near and apart from the dessert. Yeah. Well, even the dessert had like seaweed or something. Yeah. It's got a, yeah, <laughs> nori, nori, yeah. nori on it. But yeah, I loved it. I, was, I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was. No. I thought it'd be good, but it, it went on to be great. The fact it was so different to any other restaurant in Birmingham, the fact that it didn't even feel like we were still in Birmingham, it felt like, and this is no disservice to Birmingham, but it felt too cool to be in Birmingham, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it felt like you were in some little hip part of Brighton or something yeah, like or, that. or Berlin or yeah, London, you know, like yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing, you know. And the music, oh. It's your music, it's your vibe, isn't it? Mate, that music, I, I've been listening to the playlist, like, since we've been it's incredible. Yeah, it's so wow, weird. It's a good place. Weird and dark and scary in a non-obvious way. And I love that. Like Stranger Things kind of soundtrack kind of music. You yeah, know? sort of dark industrial sort of Yeah, noise. industrial noise. Yeah. Oh, man. But the whole experience. Brilliant, wasn't it? I was so surprised how just how good it actually was. Mm, oh, the muscle. The mono, muscles that were marinated in black vinegar. Everything. I'd, oh, every my single, God. I was struggling to name, which is my yeah. favorite course, because each one was as good, if not better, than the last. The mussels was the one for me. But then the ice cream, yeah. sushi rice ice sushi cream. Sushi rice ice oh. cream with shiitake mushroom caramel. Oh. <laughs> Mental. It was a new level. It, it got a mention in, like, the Michelin. It's in the Michelin Guide yeah. now, yeah. It's, only, it's only been open 13 weeks, 14 weeks. And, and it, it really deserves it. Yeah, it yeah, really yeah. deserves it's it. It's rocketed right up to the top five. I think, my, I think if I was doing the top five of Birmingham, I think it'd be in there now. Definitely, definitely. My Without top five does change regularly, to be fair. <laughs> but I think that would be in there now. Oh, 100% for me. For me. And if you don't like fish, it won't be for you. No, that's the thing. It's not for everyone, but since when has anything Alex done ever been for everyone? You know? No, well, that's it. And we both are coastal boys in here. We like the fish. We mm. like anything out of the sea. Yeah. I don't think I've eaten anything I didn't like out of the ocean. Yeah, it's true that. True that. So we better move on to today's episode. 
another absolute bang out. I hope you've been enjoying the episodes, by the way. Uh, obviously, we love making them. If some you've got to this episode, you must so be enjoying fun. them on some level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some great episodes. But let us know if you are. We'd yeah. like to know. Send some messages. Let us know what we're doing right. If there's anything you're not think, lads, come on. And then just let us know. We'll have a look. Also, if you have any food recommendations, <laughs> just send them over as well. Like really obscure places. That would be amazing. Like weird places. That's what I would like to see. Yeah. Tell us, send us some. Hidden gems. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say hidden gems. Yeah, man. So, yeah, today's episode, obviously, with Ed and Nia from the Imposter Restaurant Group. All started with Tiger Bites Pig. I love Tiger Bites Pig. But the contribution they've made to the Birmingham food scene has been unbelievable over the last five years. And then, obviously, the church and the legacy with that. So, yeah, we'll get straight into it. Yeah, this is a good one. I hope you all enjoy. If you do enjoy, please support us by telling a friend. Just go and tell one friend and send them the link to our YouTube channel. And say, have a look at these two lads just chatting about food in Birmingham. Yeah. This Talk- isn't a pyramid scheme, by the way. It's not tell a friend and they tell two friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be good as well. <laughs> it you would could be do good that. For us, but- <laughs> do that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely do that. Because, you know, how often do you see people talking positively about Birmingham? There's these incredible people doing awesome things in Birmingham. You don't hear about them enough. We're here to share them. So help us by sharing this. Mm. I hope you all enjoy Ed, Neo, and Pasta Group. Just more of what we've been doing. Um, yeah, so Neo, Ed, welcome to Breaking Bread, lads. Thank you. Nice to be here. How's everything going? Yeah, nice to get up here. So don't have a have a boy though. Obviously, maybe a little less. Obviously, you're not from Birmingham originally. No, no, neither of us are. So um, I grew up in uh, Dumfries, uh, South West Scotland. Lived in Edinburgh before I moved here. I was like 2007. Um, and yeah, pretty much been here ever since. Yeah, no, I was originally from Grimsby, so I've been here for 15 years. Yeah, started working here, working in hospitality when I moved to Birmingham. Um, and never really looked back. Why Birmingham? Uh, I came here for uni originally and then stayed a few weeks and then decided it was a... Uh, bit better to work as a bartender and then yeah i did just hospitality um at uni and then basically figured out like you just kind of stay and work in hospitality as opposed to spend three years getting into more debt and uh learning how to do what i was already doing <laughs> so yeah that's uh that kind of uh, where it started off nice and you left edinburgh for birmingham yeah 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 i was uh i was chefing in edinburgh and uh, yeah, yeah, so it's a Saturday night. Uh, I'd finished work. A couple of the chefs were like, oh, do you want to go to a house party? I was like, yeah, yeah, sounds much better than like going out when it's busy like that. And I uh, met a lassie at the house party. And she was like, oh, it's my uh, last weekend in Edinburgh. I just, you know, uh, graduated, diagnostic geneticist. She was like, start my new job on Monday in Birmingham. Obviously, things went well that evening. <laughs> And in the morning, she's like, right, cool, going to pack the car and I'm off now. And I was like, do you want a navigator? And she's like, yeah, right. So I got in the car bar, like drove down. I think I'd known her for about, <laughs> I'd known her for about 10 hours by that point. Yeah, stayed, stayed for a couple of days and was just like, cool. Uh, went back up to Edinburgh, like basically handed my notice, did, did a few months of job hunting and whatnot, and then uh, moved down. So yeah, lasted a couple of years, so it wasn't, wasn't a total bust. <laughs> But Edinburgh must have been a hard city because my brother lived. I went to Edinburgh a lot. Was it cracking city? It is. Yeah, it's not so great if you don't have any money. And I was basically like, I uh, like CDP on nothing. It, like especially because the cost of living there is really high, so you don't really get to enjoy it on that same sort of level. It's a great city, but if you've got you know two pennies to rub together, then uh, yeah, it's a it's a challenge. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful, and like the food scene's really good as well. Like we were up in July, June, July, to Mrs. Chef up. She had like our uh, cousin's wedding there and like it was sunny the whole weekend and stuff. She's oh, like, this is great. And I'm like, yeah, this, <laughs> come up. So you had all the sun they had that year then? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> we actually went up as well during COVID, like for one reason or another. And it, I just, first time I'd ever been and we got there and I was on my own. And I went up to the Royal Mile. I was the only person on the Royal Mile, which was the most crazy thing. That was my experience in Edinburgh. <laughs> was in Digio on my own on the Royal Mile. I walked all the way up to the top and I was like, no one will ever experience this again. No. Like and I just don't think that, that 
Maybe, I mean, obviously, the food and drink scene there is amazing. I've got friends there and stuff that are always like, come and visit, come and visit. I'm like, the only time I've been to visit, no one was there. Yeah. <laughs> and we, 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 I think we ordered delivery yeah, from yeah, yeah. a, a Thai place oh, that was yeah. supposed to be really good. Um, the place we were staying in was really nice. But yeah, we literally, I was like walking around for, for hours in Edinburgh and did not see a single person. That's incredible. In, like one of the most touristic places I'm ever. Saying, normally, it's just like wall-to-wall -wall yeah. people sure, everywhere yeah. you look, you know? Uh -huh. I, I used I used to have a, one of the flats that we had was like just opposite St Giles Cathedral, like on the mile. Man, like especially if you're hungover and want to just go get some like uh, milk, bread, milk is it, whatever. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, like leaving the flat and suddenly there's just people everywhere. You're like, oh fucking hell! <laughs> it was a lot. And then like yeah, by the time you come to every August and you're doing the festival, and like every day is like the worst Saturday, but every day for six weeks is like that like it's tuesday it's probably raining because it's edinburgh in august but and it's still like you get to 12 o'clock and the ticket machine just starts going you're like no <laughs> jesus what year was this when you just came to birmingham was it similar kind of time or um about 2007 for you just yeah just one year after that yeah 2008 what was it like here very different <laughs> yeah you can, be, you can be honest we've um, before. first time i came i stayed at the um the hotel on station street it's at the comfort inn but uh fire next to adult world uh, <laughs> and, and uh i think probably all i can say is it's probably all been uphill from that moment um but yeah i didn't get into my any of my first choice uh university places not saying Birmingham was my last choice, but uh, <laughs> let's just, I was expecting to be in Manchester in September. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. The city's changed. I've, it's crazy now. And the amount of people you meet and they say, oh, Birmingham has changed, hasn't it? Oh, I'm, and you know, these are people that used to live in Birmingham 30 years ago. That they're saying to you, then they've never been back. And everyone's like, I think my mum is one of the biggest advocates for it. And she's got friends who were from Birmingham and they've got no idea how it's changed. They probably like drive up to their relatives in like Northfield every year. Don't come anywhere near the city. Don't know anything new. And my mum's like, come to Birmingham, come to Birmingham. Like you need to, it's like, oh, I know Birmingham. I lived there, didn't I? I'm from Birmingham. And it's, people don't know the change. You've got like, it's, it's crazy. Just in that time, the buildings, like the culture, the city, everything is, is like, yeah. Like I remember like, there's basically Arcadian and Broad Street. And that was it, like. There's yeah, nothing else be. really like. That would be, yeah, you'd be just queuing to get in Brannigan's. Yeah. <laughs> that would be bad, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah, it's it's mad. Like, what's happening? I think it, now it doesn't get the kind of credit it deserves, and people still think of it as that from when the last time they were there, which is nuts. Like, you know, just thinking, oh, well, yeah, it was, it was a bit shit when I came 20 years ago. I remember the, the ball ring, the old ball ring. It's like, yeah, cool. Go, like, come back, try it, see it. Like, you know changed a, a lot because we get that a lot like with tiger because obviously being next to the train station like it's it'll be a lot of people's like they've got off the train it's their first port of call like you know like obviously they've done a little bit of research so they'll come and like plonk themselves in on like a friday or like friday lunch or saturday lunch whenever they've landed and they're like well what what do we do now like where'd you go like and it's great you just fucking hit the recommendations like go to this place you go to this place. church <laughs> yeah oh yeah 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 trentina for lunch chicotillo for dinner church for a sunday we can sort it you have a great time could, could you imagine 2005 landing at new street and finding somewhere like the tiger bites pig yeah. sure yeah you'd have to get off a plane another <laughs> train we have we have like obviously the Neil's got like a list of recommendations on Google Maps. We used to go to Kilda a lot after work, which again feels to people like it's a world away from New Street Station. It's that little gap between Bur between like Birmingham and Digbert, like city centre and Digbert. There's some people is like, whoa, like that's miles away. You gotta get a cab there. <laughs> and we're always like, we're like Kilda, amazing beer, amazing wine. Like this, the wine list is unreal. The cider list is unreal. Like, and then obviously the food now as well is great. And you're like, you, you, and then you forget to, to recommend it to someone and you're always like hitting yourself being like, oh, why don't we recommend Kilda? That's but like, cause you just like city sense you like pure, pure craft, like, you know, solids, get the Scotch egg, get a pint, you know, yeah. it's local. And then, you know, but yeah, like city center wise, you've got your map now and you're like people are looking at the map and getting all the recommendations from it. But yeah, before we'd be like, oh, people are like, what about a cocktail bar in this area? And you'd be like, this is probably back in the day when Island Bar was the only cocktail bar. 
And you'd be like, uh, yeah, cocktail bar and a jewelry court. Um, uh, <laughs> have, you thought, have you heard of Island Bar? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I heard Glimp and I was on James Martin on Saturday and he was saying, they said they were talking about his venues and obviously he had the cocktail bar that closed, yep. the bistro in there. He said, they said, what went wrong? He said, well, I tried opening a cocktail bar in Birmingham when there was no cocktails and no sign of any cocktails in Birmingham. <laughs> he said, no, it's fantastic. And he reeled off a few and you're like, yeah, he did just hit it at the wrong time. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he had some really good bartenders in there as well. Yeah. His Lost and Found were doing like bits with cocktails at that time as well, which was crazy from like a Marston's chain. They had some really good bartenders there. They all went over to Ginger's, Pernell's Bistro, and um, they were doing like, oh, cocktail comps were hosted there and stuff. But I feel like back in the day, that was like less, we got less coverage of that. And then nowadays thankfully we're finally getting the credit as a city in terms of the cocktail scene that we deserve because back in the day you would never get glass magazine to come to birmingham you'd never get imbibe to come to birmingham rob used to rob wood used to try and pay people to come from london to review his bars pay for their travel and their hotel and all their drinks just to show them what he's doing in birmingham and people wouldn't do it like they wouldn't even come if it was paid for because they they were like would, would not leave london because it was so london centric then it was a bit more edinburgh as well Manchester started appearing in there, but now I think finally Birmingham's like, you know, making big ways and like people like Couch and Passing Fancies have like, yeah, have overtaken London now by miles. So I think if you looked at the amount of cocktail bars and the amount we get in the top 10, then yeah, yeah we're, I think we're ahead of everyone, to yeah, be honest. For sure. sure. And it's, you know, that's, that is for the people that have kind of come through with that and kind of putting the time into it, like Fox and Chance as well, all bartenders, all setting up their own thing, you know, so. Yeah, it's good that that's there's that kind of recognition out there now. But yeah, back back in the day, you know, you you struggled to to even recommend. Well, there was a lot of pubs doing cocktails, doing quite good cocktails. Victoria, Jekyll and Hyde were doing their thing, and they, there was good cocktails there, and they're good cocktail bartenders there. Um, but they weren't cocktail bars. So if someone was like, "Can I go to a cocktail bar?" and you said, "Go to the Vic on a Friday night," it, they'd be like, "Where have you sent me?" <laughs> like, yeah. It's like two hundred people there, and they'd be like. Well, they do do cocktails, but it's not a cocktail bar by any stretch, you know. Sure. No. Now it's, yeah, I think like Glyn Pernell said, you know, it's at the time. I mean, he was probably at the top end at the time. He was probably, we were probably like, oh, eight pounds for a cocktail. Mm. And now we're like, you don't really bat an eyelid till it gets to 12. Like, yeah, eight pound, I'd snap your hand off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. I mean, Give I me a martini for eight pound. <laughs> you know what I mean? These are probably good, quality, like, what well, were good quality drinks. Mm. And at the time, we just, uh, yeah. I think it was um, maybe I think maybe like the end of the lounge bar era a little bit as well perhaps but there's not really that I wouldn't say anywhere that's in, now has kind of got that lounge bar vibe as that you know a bit of, everything's quite accessible which is good and nice. Mm. I think we've done just good fantastic cocktail bars yeah. like not even just average they're incredible like we're big fans of passive fans so I can sit in there all day. Yeah. I often do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, and it's just, we're so lucky when it comes to that Oh, now. for sure. I think, like, I'm, you know, I've got to know Matt and Eve quite well from Buzz and Fancies and what's nice is that they have, like, a respect for what's kind of been done before them. And that's, like, really nice when you go in there and you get, like, so much love from the minute you want to do it, which I'm sure everyone does. But there's a lot of, like, we like we see what you've what you've done and what you've had to kind of work through and through and through to get to where you are and what you've mm. done with the venues, and then they they kind of have a respect for that, and they realise that kind of people needed to do that first to get the independent scene to kind of better than it was. You know, there's a nice for them to to say that it's to come from them who are you know they're on top of their game right now. Oh, well, Matt's the best in the country, yeah. technically. Yeah, yeah, almost best in the world. Yeah, right? the so, best in the world. So, yeah. For him just to be like, mate, like, they, you know, they obviously don't get a lot of time off, but when when they do and they like come in here and they have a bottle of wine and some small plates and like they just, their feedback is just like everything, you know, they, they love it and they love like what we've, what we've achieved before that kind of thing. It's now their turn to be in the spotlight and kind of, you know, you know, shine, shine bright for Birmingham, really. Where were you working when you came to Birmingham there? When I got to Birmingham, yeah, uh, in restaurants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I because uh, I didn't know where we are, I didn't know anyone, mm. so I was just like, right, well, better get a job then. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> she may be smart, but I can't be a freeloader. And um, so yeah, I started working at Handmade Burger when oh, they yeah, yeah. they had their first uh, the first one that was on the canal side, mm. 
at Brindley Place. Um, I think they'd been open like, just less than a year when I went in. And they, um, so uh, the, the guy who was like assistant manager at the time was a good uh, friend of mine, Andy, was just like, you know, went in and was like, I'm, I'm a chef. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> when can you start? Um, so yeah, so I like, started with them, just sort of taking their idea of like doing, you know, the fancier burger thing and actually putting some sort of like chefy process, especially into the kitchen and, you know, specs, GPs, training everyone like how to do things properly, etc. So I stuck with them for like a couple of years. Was basically, I think it was the it Brindley Place for like six months and then did open support. So they opened one in Touchwood um, and then one at uh, High Cross in Leicester, uh, Sheffield in Aberdeen. And I sort of went every time they moved, trained everyone up, showed them what to do. And uh, yeah, flipped a, an awful lot of burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Well, that's another thing that's took off, isn't it? Like burgers aren't, it's time as cocktails were just a cocktail. A burger now is Burgers is a funny one, thing, eh? Like, because it's such a, you know, because burgers has been a thing for, you know, like fancier burgers for over 20, you know, 20, 25 years. And those ones were like quite chunky, quite, you know, same, samey on the, on the, on the dressings, you know, like chicken and blue cheese. Yeah, yeah, that sort of, you oh, know, that first wave. That of it. <laughs> and then so everyone's like, like, and then there's loads of them. You get all your like GBKs and stuff like that. Everyone jumps on that, and then there's a saturation of the market of all that same sort of style. And then you get that sort of renaissance of like all the smash burger stuff in the last what's that, five to eight years, mm. and you see you like how popular that is now. Mm. Like obviously handmade. Don't think is with us anymore, or so. yeah. The one in Tully Hall's not there. God no. The <laughs> <gone. laughs> so where did you go after that? I, I went and worked in a deli in uh, in Leicester, Salvador Deli, which I think it's one of the well, name. You know, like, <laughs> what a terrible deli, great name. And then yeah, yeah, move uh, move back to Birmingham, pretty sharpish. Opened the Drop Forged. It was up um, next to the Julia Quarter train station. We shot over a beautiful space, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, too cavernous, didn't quite work. Did some more chain stuff, ZZs, that fucking sucked. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then I just had enough of, of anything sort of corporate-y and, um, and ended up at uh, Bodega. I was just like, yeah, wait some tables here. That was really good fun. There's a lot of really strong people there, like yeah. Ben uh, Robson Young from uh, Tropea. We worked a lot of shifts together, waiting tables. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that. Obviously, I think that's when, like, we first sort of, because you were at Island Bar and the Vic, yep. sort of crossed over a little bit because obviously that was quite better. This was so important for a, for a time in the city, the amount of venues that it had, and that sort of cross pollination of of staff members, like get to know everyone and whatnot. Yep. Then the two cats, Nikki Astley, in the wilderness space. Yeah, did that for a bit, uh, went traveling, came back, and then was here. So I, was, uh, I came back and I was just <laughs> doing like part-time waiting. Like I wasn't really sure what I was wanting to do. And um, and the poor head chef that they had at the time, bless him, wasn't really cutting the mustard. And I was like, guys, you shit, man. Like, but sack him <laughs> off. And they were like, do you want to do it? I was like, Sure. So yeah, part time waiter to head chef and one one move. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, quite the promotion. <laughs> Did you want to come here? Because Nikki was here before. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, it was. It yeah, because Nikki gone and done done two cats, so he was away. But like, obviously, like Carl was. It was yeah. still Carl's baby yeah, yeah, when he's yeah. here. So yeah, like uh, take. But had he said like, oh, it's a good place to. It, is yeah, we used to come in here drinking yeah, all the time and yeah. that, and like you know, obviously I knew knew the vibe and like knew all the staff, like Tim and stuff like that, a man and whatnot. So it was good just to like get get back in the kitchen properly, get a feel for it again. It wasn't as busy as we kind of wanted it to be here, and um, it sort of went. I don't know. It was it was quiet, and they were like, well, maybe do pizzas, maybe not. It was here where I met Keith, who was our first business partner at Tiger, um, and we were just like, nah, don't want to sling pizzas, don't want to fuck around with that. This feels like a natural break where we can go and do our own thing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's... Was really... that when it was Cajun food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was really good food. Yeah, yeah, I used to come here just for that. Yeah. It was yeah. so, so nice. Food. Yeah, it was annoying, like, because Keith, Keith's an amazing chef, 
and we were just like, we got through it pretty hard when I wrote like a really nice like spring summer menu, like really fresh, like using a lot of that influences without it being too heavy, you know, like, cause some of it can be, um, we're like, yeah, no, I think we could really like push this on a bit. And then they were like, nah, we're going to put a pizza oven in the back here. And we're like, nah. How many times have you said all the time, don't you? As yeah. soon as a place gets a pizza oven in that didn't have one originally, it's time to... For sure. <laughs> so, yeah, time yeah, to yeah, look yeah, somewhere yeah, else. <laughs> yeah, and then, then just started looking for looking for, for venues and found the one on Stevenson Street and, yeah, took, took the plunge. Didn't fancy standing outside in a pissing rain for half the year. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ed, do you, do you start at the... What's the group called with the Vic and... Uh, Bits and Twisted. Yeah. Um, I started off originally in La Cibana's in Arcadian. And then I worked in France for a little bit um, and then came back. And at the time, the Vic was like the place to work for bartenders. And I was begging the assistant manager there for a job for ages and ages and ages. Um, and eventually got a trial shift there. Took top, took the most money that in the bar of my trial shift. And then at that point, I think the, the GM there had to kind of pay attention a little bit <laughs> and be like, yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> stop, like, stop hanging around here and bothering me. <laughs> and I stayed there uh, for a couple of years and then Moved to Island Bar as general manager. Did, um, I don't know, four, four or five years at Island Bar before then going back to the Vic to run the Vic. Mm. And then, yeah, that was so that was kind of what I did. And then after that, I was part of the operations team for them. So I was writing cocktail menus, training staff for their business, for Business Twisted. So all, all the bodegas and Jekyll and Hyde, Rose Villa at the time. And that's, yeah. So obviously, when I was bringing Island Bar, all the staff from Bodega and everyone would come to Island Bar at the end of the night. Mm. And that's where we started to hang around with each other. And then, yeah, or the business partner, Max, his girlfriend worked at the Vic at the time. So he started hanging around there as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, so many like industry nights on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Sunday, fun day. Sunday, like fun day. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, going to work at 4 p.m. on a Monday, <laughs> feeling horrible. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of where uh, that, and then, yeah, I did actually worked here on Sundays um, part-time, just as you, like Neil said, just as they got the new menu launched. And um, was here on Sundays doing the roasts, and the food was was genuinely really good. And then, yeah, kind of as soon as the pizza were went, and that was it. Yeah, no, <laughs> no more Sunday roasts, and no more need for me on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we were just, I mean, that was the one. Like, you know, you're not doing that, and then you know, those sun, Sunday evenings, and we were just sitting there, being like, "Yeah, let's let's do it." Like, you know, take the plunge, let's go to our own place, but fuck working for yeah. anyone else. Like, you know, we've. We've got enough uh, experience at that point. We thought <laughs> the, the spark had kind of been lit then, like you know, with with the bitter and twisted group and with this place here, with what Carl did here. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Dig with Diamonds kind of came along just a little bit after that, and mm -hmm. yeah. for, it, from out of that, the whole kind of food scene just exploded in Birmingham. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah, between between here and bitter and twisted, the amount of people who have gone and opened venues and yeah. gone on and done done stuff from from that is huge. But yeah, definitely for us, like it was a good uh, good training ground. Because I mean, it's you know, it's like any of the independent stuff. There's a lot more transparency to it. Like if you go and work at a chain place, it's all like here's the specs, like. You know, we're gonna do wastage to the point where we can tell if someone's had an extra cup of coffee type thing. There's that financial side of it, but there's not the actual like how are we, you know, reacting live to things and being able to change. If you're as easy as it takes six months to for them to like write a new menu type thing. For us, us if we want to, you know, asparagus is in season. Do want to get a special on? Just yeah, we'll print some new menus. Done. Were you working together here at the time, and then you just yeah, 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 yeah. Were yeah. you business partners from the beginning? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was, it was always like, yeah, we're gonna do something. Yeah, I wanted to open a ramen restaurant, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Told no, that's <laughs> that's where Tiger came from, essentially. Who said no? You said no to ramen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Um, well, we, so the, the, yeah, we wanted to do something East Asian, like obviously, like you know, cuisine's great, flavors are huge, like. Um, the amount, amount that you can play around with that and especially how open it is to like uh, veggie vegan stuff as well so we're like yeah that's a vibe that we want to go for like Burma has a really good strong Chinatown but don't think there's stuff that's like Tiger that sort of our sort of more anglicized take on it I guess you know like there's authentic flavors but it's not authentic if it, you know and it's not really what we're about just like we'll just do our own thing yeah, I think that like authenticity thing is like 
kind of a key part for us and everywhere and it's like yeah we're not it's we're not your mum cooking at home in a in a kitchen back in whatever country it's from and we never pretend to do that you know and that's one of the key things that we do and all everything we apply ourselves to yeah. is kind of like we're not you know we're never going to claim to be from any of those places or that it's yeah, it's all about being respectful yeah, it's being of being respectful like, it's completely, yeah. Yeah. Like what like what are the techniques that are, like that make those dishes, those drinks, whatever it is that we're selling, but like right, what how do we sort of interpret it that into like what we do here? Yeah. But sometimes that works nicely as well because you know, you apply more of a kind of chefy perspective to things, but sometimes someone in a kitchen that's home home style kitchen in that kind of uh, authentic venue you know they may not have the the same like chefing skills the same kind of you know i don't know even equipment i guess so that's kind of applying a chefy element to it as well mm. um just to kind of make it different you know it's like that kind of putting a lot sometimes putting a lot more effort in as well <laughs> which is like, you know, sometimes over effort yeah. <laughs> yeah does this does this need to be as pretty no it doesn't it's supposed to be a bit more rustic can we just yeah. scruffy this up a little for something that you know where they're whole basis of the cuisine is is garlic ginger and soy <laughs> and you're like oh, i've got an idea for a special well, what's in it i uh, said so garlic uh, <laughs> ginger and, uh, and soy and you're like, oh, all yeah. right yeah. okay cool yeah Track all right, on. <laughs> but yeah like we're, we're all, like we were hunting for spaces like just looking like you know obviously budget wasn't huge it's never it's never been huge um you know there's no you know uh the fairy uh, godparents sprinkling money in our general <laughs> direction so it's like right what could what you know what can we afford what works um and then yeah stevenson street location wise it's great and i like you know being right next to the train station that you should, you should be able to do something with this it's tiny and he's like well we're doing ramen i'm like are we fuck it's like <laughs> where am i making noodles broth like you know like because you're gonna have to be like boiling stuff for days on it like not happening but we can do bao. Like we've got the rashi, we can put in like the, the steamer basket. And then that's sort of like, that's how we generally approach like every new venue. It's like, think of like a core like dish, especially like a core serve, like what the dish is and then like a drink to go with it. So like Tiger, the, you know, Tiger Bites Peck is like the Taiwanese slang for the port bao, right? And that's the, that's the vibe. So. If you're doing port bow and we want to have a pint with that so we get a draft in and then you sort of build the menu out from there and that's how it works with all of them like we try and treat that quite sort of organically but yeah like, for the cooking of it did you have to learn how to make it well, all, or did you already know I mean, how to do this keith he brought a lot to that right yeah. like, because uh, he's uh, originally from perth in australia so i had a lot of like experience doing uh east asian cooking so like was like yeah i can make bao we can you know i've got a recipe for master stock that's that and we'll just we'll work on the rest so yeah there was a lot of everything was handwritten <laughs> every recipe was handwritten in a notebook like battered yeah yeah, upon yeah, yeah yeah and it so, wasn't particularly legible to anyone else <laughs> yeah it's literally i had loads of notebooks and they were all yeah all all these handwritten ones and it was some crazy stuff in there that would never have translated to tiger but I mean, if you could get him to cook them for you, they'd be amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because he's off with uh, with Brad now, doing stuff with Brad. So, yeah. but yeah, you, you get him on your list of better food to cook. Because <laughs> Keith is good crack. He fucking cheer you, you know, with <laughs> loads of mad stories. But yeah, like obviously it was like, yeah, we have that basis, the menu. Like we did loads of R&D, like his kitchen and stuff like that, working like what we do. And then yeah, then it was like take take the plunge, sign the lease, get it get it done, and uh, then we had no power for like four months. Yeah, no <laughs> Yeah, the um, the landlord uh, had told us there was three phase, and there's three phase in the building. There's not three phase in the unit. <laughs> so, given you need that for your rationale, we were yeah. like, <laughs> um, so yeah, mo multiple back and forth with Western Power, with uh, Eon, with Empower, like. Yeah, I had to dig up some of the street. Obviously, the tram lines were getting dug up at that point as well. Jeez. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was a great start, not being open for a month. Yes. Yeah, it was July, and then we opened 28th of November. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and yeah. I, think, I don't know, I can't remember, maybe we had like so 
three months rent free or something from the landlord. Yeah, it's gone. And then, gone. And then it was like, cool, you know, okay, rent. You're like, cool, thanks. <laughs> but you are aware there's no power. And they were like, I think they, I asked for like nine months rent free. And the guy basically laughed in our face, like came down to laugh in our face as well. Probably from, <laughs> probably from London and gave us one month. <laughs> and we were like, <laughs> he's like, Who, who's calculated this? I was like, me. And he's like, it's ridiculous. I was like, cool, okay. And he's like, you can have one month rent free. I was like, yeah. They've always been particularly helpful there. <laughs> was it busy straight away? No. 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 I remember, like, I think I've got a screenshot of the first time we took a grand on a Saturday and we were so fucking proud of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> How soon after the opening was that? Uh, oh no it, like i think yeah because it was yeah end of november i mean like because obviously we've worked in a lot of venues and stuff like that same as any of the any of the indie venues you get a lot of like hospitality love straight off the bat because everyone knows how fucking hard it is so like everyone comes down and supports you a bit and like tells the pals and stuff but like how much that takes to like permeate out into you know the wider birmingham community like that takes a while so yeah, like I think we did did all right the first because it was obviously straight in there. Christmas, general market, all the rest of it was all right. January, February was tough, um, and then yeah, it was just like a slow, steady increase as people started to get. Um, yeah, that first year was yeah was a bit hand hand to me <laughs> <laughs> at times. Not gonna lie on that one. And then yeah, we got to the say like what was essentially the second Christmas. Had a good Christmas and we're like, yeah, we'll sort of get this. And then January and February 2020 was the same as December. It was like, it was Ramo, yeah. like it was proper kick in. And then obviously COVID hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're like, cool, right, we've just got this and now <laughs> we're closed. Yeah, and people forget how empty time was during that time. Like, oh, for sure. Ghost time. Like, yeah. Late ghost time. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was the point where we had to. Uh, yeah, adapt and adapt quickly. Yeah, because our delightful Tory MP landlord <laughs> decided we were going to pay full rent throughout COVID. Of, of course yes. he did. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. such a generous man. <laughs> uh, he was in charge of the vaccine rollout as well, so you know he understood what was going on in the situation. <laughs> um, so yeah, and uh, and then we found out that after we were paying full rent, that other people weren't. We were, which we were a bit miffed at, um, <laughs> to say the least. I think we didn't work for maybe two weeks. And it was original Patty Man who put the van outside the British Oak in Sturchley. And we were a bit like, oh, yeah, bit, not sure about that. Like, how does that work with your bubble and everything at, at home? Yeah, because you, know, you saw like KFC and all that. And, like everyone like started to open up a bit and we're like, fuck it. If someone else is like yeah. doing <laughs> anything. As soon as, like, as, soon as yeah. OPM were in that van, we were like, fuck it, let's go. And we spoke to, we, at one point I think we had like there was like six things on the go you got in covid we were at, we'd been in cork and cage can eats cherry reds and this was that was with tiger we were in cork and cage with uh tiara obviously we're doing weekends in in city center as well but we've for, been, nothing. Like, for nothing like i was yeah. basically just in cooking for everyone else all week like do all like the big prep and stuff like that and then, yeah, you guys yeah. would like turn up and just take everything. <laughs> but then we, and then I'd just do like a couple hundred quid on like for like the people who actually lived in the city centre on like a Friday, Saturday night. But like, every, you know, at Canny and Cork and Cage, like over and start saying it was wild for doing like. First day back at Cork and Cage, we didn't even turn the delivery tablet on because of how many pre orders we had. So we literally wow. turned it on and it just the printed. Until it ran yeah. out of paper. It was you know, that, you paper know that, in. that scene in the bear in the first season where they fucked it like this? Yeah, it was yeah. like that. Just do 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 like, shit. <laughs> we went to um, Sutton Goldfield and we did a uh, we did a night on a bar in an old Frankie and Benny's. So set up the kitchen <laughs> on a bar in an old Frankie and Benny's that wasn't operating anymore. And um, <laughs> did it, at this point you could, again, pre-order on delivery. I was quite good friends with the delivery rep and I, I spoke to her and I said, like, is this gonna be like is this gonna be all right? Like from your from your end? Like, she's like, Well, what are you talking about? Like we're delivery, like you're just, you know, you're just tiger about its pig. Like, what's what's the issue? I was like, 
well, there's seven and a half grand worth of food pre-ordered here. There's like 200 orders pre-ordered. She's just like, shit. <laughs> and they had to put a surge on Deliveroo in certain coal field to get more drivers out for the entire weekend we were there. Wow. And we were in this on a bar that had yeah. sockets everywhere, but sockets for blenders or tills. And we were plugging in uh, like... Steamers and inductions. <laughs> inductions. And it was like, bang, bang, bang. We like get an extension cable. Plugged it. There's literally extension game was running across the entire place. And then you literally serve some more people and someone was like, fry's gone down. You're like, oh my God. Right, try plugging it in here. Nope, no power there anymore. <laughs> like, right. And people, we had people helping us that night who then went on to work for us. After that, this guy turned up who'd worked at um, Hotel de Vamp, turned up with a full, uh, full whites with him and a, like his full knife roll. And he turned up to fry chicken. And for the entire night. So he literally stood at a fryer on a disused bar in a Frankie Benny's in Sutton Goldfield after working <laughs> as, you know, a CDP or something at a hotel de van doing classic French food. And he, and he turned up with his full knife roll. And we're like, don't, don't worry about that. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> leave that in the bag. Don't leave that in the bag. <laughs> There's 20 kilos of chicken pie here for you to fry all night. I'd be and terrible. I'd be like, one for you, <laughs> one for me. <laughs> I could do as people like, all kinds of different people like helped out at that point. And like, there's a guy that used to be my assistant manager at the, at the Vic, he could like cook a bit of food and they'd like turn up and they, you'd be like, it'd be obviously fry Like the person didn't really know what was going to be fries. And like, they'd be frying fried chicken and tofu for like from five o'clock until nine o'clock. Like you just- How many got order? It wasn't like- 17 on order at the moment. It yes. wasn't, it wow. wasn't worth like calling out like how many they needed to do. Because you just keep doing it, just keep <laughs> doing it until we run out, and then that, and that's it. And like that, and that was like that's. We did the delivery boxes at the same time. Uh, <laughs> the that, delivery then, boxes were fun, man. Delivery boxes. We were like delivering across Birmingham ourselves, and um, <laughs> there was like at that point again, there was like all like people coming out of the woodwork, it's like offering to drive the delivery boxes around Birmingham, and that's when you realise that there's some. The B postcode stretches quite a long way. Yeah. <laughs> For someone not from Birmingham, I had no idea that'd be going to Wensbury or where Wensbury <laughs> was, to be honest. So when we were like, oh, free delivery to all B postcodes, and we'd be like getting like a little route map for out, being like, okay, so yeah, they're all like roughly in the same area. And then uh, this one's B99, and you're like, oh, I didn't know it went up to 99. You're like, cool. <laughs> Where's that? Halfway like, to Leicester. And then you knock on the door and they wouldn't be in. And you'd be like, oh, and you obviously it's fresh food. You couldn't yeah, leave it yeah. there. They're expecting DVD to little, deliver little it or six something. Bow and a bit of pork, and you <laughs> knocking on the door and then running away two meters from the door in case someone was at the door. Yeah, hello, Tiger White's pig. And then some people hadn't didn't even realize that someone had ordered it for them. Yeah, yeah. So you just stood there in a not obviously people were expecting a delivery van or whatever. You just stood there <laughs> in your normal clothes by your car going Tiger White's pig, and they're like, no, we didn't order that. So like, well, I've driven all the way to Wensbury, so you're having it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Enjoy. And um, then we started, yeah, we were like posting it to people and people were going cra crazy for that as well. But like that was, that was a nightmare. A lot of people don't understand the importance of them all in those boxes at that time. For sure. Like we've got spoken to people who still talk about it. You know, like, I know where you live because I delivered a box to your house three times during lockdown. And you're just like, and they're, just, and he, they're always like, oh my God, thank you. that was so good. The box was so good in lockdown, getting to make our own bow and everything like that. And just like, we're like, no, thank you. Like that, you don't realize how much, how important that was at the time for what we were doing. You know, that was like, that was like make or break for that at that point. For sure. And people, yeah, they're like, we were like, no, you got to make a view pork bow at home. But like, that was the difference between basically being there or not being there back in the shop. Cause we were paying full rent at the shop at that point for it to be empty. <laughs> so like we, we were literally like, it's hell yeah, these boxes <laughs> delivering three or four times a day to not make any money. Like it was just to pay the rent there. Yeah. Yeah. So that people, yeah, anyone that bought a box, yeah. <laughs> they absolute legends, yeah. <laughs> people are mad for bars. Why do you, why do you think they took off so much? Why do you think people love them? I mean, I do, if I, if I worked in Birmingham city centre, I'd be there all the time. It's tasty stuff it. and bread, oh, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's not... <laughs> I don't know what it is about it though. It's so simple, but like so comforting. All, like all the best stuff is. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I think, as I said, it's because I think Tiger's got that like its own 
vibe, both like with the food and the venue itself, yeah. that really helps stand it out. Like, right. and I think, yeah, I think I'd always said about like the bagel comparison because we like we obviously we've done specials and stuff like that over the time, but you know, you've been in. It's fucking tiny in there. Like mm. what, what you can't see is there's a fridge. There's nothing else there that's like, you know, there's like stairs down to the basement with a big walk-in and a bunch of like chefs just chopping it. None of that. There's like what you can't see behind the wall is a fridge. That's it. There's a fryer, there's a rice cooker. Like there's not there's no space in there. Wow. So like the core menu, the bagel thing is like if you've got a bagel shop, you expect some strama, smoked salmon, you know, like all the sort of the classics. Same with Tiger, like it's a core menu that over time, because you know, if you can only fit 14 people in at the same time, it's gonna take a while to get around everyone, right? Like, mm -hmm. have, get, like give people enough time to come and enjoy it and tell their friends and come back. And that's sort of like, that's the core of, of what Tiger is. It's like getting people in and, and really like, you know, making it feel like it's their own, like being able to interact, having that sense of theater, like, Oh, to go on your own, it's got to be the best place to go on your own. <laughs> I love going on my own. I absolutely love it. Just go sit in that corner spot and just chat to anyone. Chat to yeah, anyone. yeah, yeah. Like, like have it because it's that bar vibe, isn't it? Obviously, chefs normally are like we're hiding in the back or in the dungeon downstairs or something. But to be front and center, but with Tiger, obviously everyone's got a lot of questions. Like, mm -hmm. why this? Where does this come from? What's this ingredient? Like, what you know, like whatever it is. And being able to actually answer that directly and have like some dialogue with customers like, is really like been a, a massive plus point. So yeah, just gotta replicate that at some point when we <laughs> when we finally move. <laughs> so what was the second venue and what made you wanna do a second venue? Was it we had you had it before COVID or No, so we um so we at Cork and Cage we did Tierra. Yeah. Because, you know, we were in our little bubble. We're pumping out all the tiger food. We also really like tacos and, uh, and tequila. And more stuff. stuff and bread, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All yeah. things and more bread. Yeah, Just yeah. different bread. Different bread. <laughs> yeah. Less soy, plenty of garlic. <laughs> um, yeah, we did a timeline on that. I'm not, I can't exactly remember, but then we opened, Cork and Gage reopened. We did eat out to help out. Mm. Then we got closed again, I think, after that. Mm. Something, and then went back to doing back to doing the same as before. So takeaway out of Cork and Cage, three or four nights a week. Um, yeah, just sort of get into get into grips with it. Like obviously doing a lot of tacos, right? But you know what did we want? Like how did we want yeah. it to be? All that sort of jazz. So like yeah, got a, got a, got the bug for it. Got, you know, and it was busy. So obviously there was there was, uh, there was appetite for it. And then yeah, luckily found the uh, the space on Frederick Street. And it was just like, yeah, let's, you know, we've got one on the belt. Let's fucking go. Yeah. It's safe to say there wasn't much in the way of, if you wanted tacos, there wasn't really anywhere to go and get them. No, but, exactly. Which is criminal. <laughs> it's how fucking nice they are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, for someone who worked at uh, Bodega for so long, but uh, yeah, not the finest example of. Uh, yeah, that Mexican was, that, was, that was literally <laughs> the only Mexican option, really, wasn't it? There was yeah. nothing yeah. else. I can't even look at a fucking burrito. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like you know fact, like because it's funny i think one of the things like when ed and i you know we've been to look at a lot of like potential venues and it's always we forget the right vibe off of it because we'll stand and right cool right what needs to go here in terms of kitchen equipment bar equipment like where's everywhere going to work how's that going to work flow wise with customers yep. Where's the power now going to come from? Because obviously we learned that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, checking for sockets. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's straight into the fuse board. Like, as soon as we're in it. Oh, stop me. I'll find, I'll find the fuse board. Just trying to, like, get that vibe. So, like, we went to go to the Frederick Street. It was like a greasy spoon. Like, no one in it. You know, it takes a little bit of imagination, especially more so when it's a pre-existing venue. Yeah. Than like an empty shell like because mm. then you can just like cool i think this is how it doesn't work when you're in somewhere that's like especially you know not the most glamorous you're like this is gonna be a nice one day right <laughs> um and yeah we're looking at it looking at it, like okay cool and they're like well there's an upstairs as well we're like what's there nothing we're like went upstairs you know the layout in there yeah. it was just just a empty concrete hall just full of trash yeah 
broken seats, old cutlery, broken equipment. It basically looked like our lockup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, you guys doing this with us? Not. No, do we get this? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think I'd already like, said yes. Yeah. <laughs> Before we knew there was an upstairs, I'd already said yes. It was so like, we were sold on downstairs. We were like, yeah, we, this is, this, we can definitely make this work. And then there was like, cool, we've got double the space yeah, for that money. Upstairs. We're like, what, is it upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Some weird little massage room. It was weird. Yeah. But yeah, and then it was like, cool, right, time, time to do another open, which is always fun. Was the aim when you first started Tiger, was it to get as many venues as you can or was it to open a variety of different venues? Um, I mean, I think it's it's always based on on the venues themselves, really, like what comes up. I think we've always wanted to like have a little group and then sort of expand from there. It's nice to have the different concepts and they have a different feel, but there's always the core principles behind them all. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's very sort of circumstantial. Like I think, I think it definitely is based on the unit. Like saying earlier about the the ramen thing with Tiger, it's like no, it can't. Ow, oh, that'll work in here. Um, obviously with COVID and having done Tierra, but then when we found the site, we we're like, yeah, sound. We can put put that big bar in the front. That's that's great for server. A little space kitchen in the back. Can smash out loads of tacos. This works. And then with Trentina, like that corner unit, I think you did your eye on it for about six yeah. years. I thought, <laughs> I thought I was told it had gone. And then the letting agent offered it to, to Max, our business partner, and he, they said like, well, can you do anything with that? And I was like, Max messaged me. I said, that's gone years ago. It's been taken. It's off the market. Like it's, I, like, I looked at it years ago. So when he was like, no, no, it's back on. They're trying to, trying to sell it to us. So I was thinking, I don't know exactly what it's going to be because I've been look, thinking about it for three years. Um, <laughs> I don't know a few people that had looked at it, and uh, there was one guy who said to me, "What like a well-known local restaurant?" To he's like, "Oh, it didn't pass our due diligence." And I thought, "Oh, what are we missing here?" And I thought, no, "Never mind, let's crack, crack on." <laughs> and I'm still not sure what he means by that, but um, yeah. Maybe it'll fall down next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like a car park. It's like the guys yeah. who own the building just used to park their spinny cars in it. Yeah. It's like... That was it. Well, was that... I mean, you obviously, like, where it is, you know, you've got St. Paul's, Caroline Street's, like, that main thoroughfare, like, up in the car. And, it, like, the corner unit in it, it's just some someone parking their Bentley or whatever yeah. fucking it. Like, Jesus. what a waste. Yeah. So, yeah, as soon as we're in there, especially by the time you get to number three, you actually maybe understand, because obviously we don't have an interior design background. You know, we're not used to shop fitting and building kitchens and stuff like that. It's very much like you learn on the job. But I think we felt like, yeah, we, we kind of know what we're after here. I think it's got like, I know, the most coherent yeah. aesthetic. We wanted a nice, bright, airy pasta cafe. And, you know, that's that's what's there. And, yeah. uh, I spent a long time learning how to get exposed back to exposed brick on it. <laughs> and ended up... <laughs> Wait, which is actually fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, I ended up taking an angle grinder to it uh, for <laughs> many hours. But someone had told us there was a, like a quick fire way of doing it where you basically paste these sheets to the wall, leave it on for 24 hours and you pull the sheets off and everything comes off and leaves the bricks behind. So we spent like 300 pounds on these sheets and then applied them, and then pulled them down and like one layer of paint came off the wall. Oh. <laughs> I was <laughs> Googling them like how to find, how to get back to exposed brick. Without just chipping the brick away. Yeah. <laughs> Ended up having to, having to buy an angle grinder, which was terrifying. Uh, the first time you put a blade on an angle grinder and pass it to your colleague to have a go on, you're thinking, <laughs> I hope I put this on right. Yeah. <laughs> you're just thinking, if they turn it on and I've screwed it in the wrong way and it goes flying off, then it's good. someone's going to go out here. We're so <laughs> proud when we opened Tierra and we actually had a toilet. It was like, we're really coming up in the world. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was, a, that was a challenge to open. Like an hour before we're due to open, there's no front window. That's uh, it's always good fun. The, uh, the electrician... <laughs> Fell down the steps to the front of yep. the restaurant as well, like three days before it was due to open and it couldn't work. And then a lot of electricians won't touch other people's work, especially not midway through it. So we literally had to, to beg someone to come in just to get the lights working. Still to this day, there's an interesting feature. The lights in the toilet dim with the lights in the restaurant. 
because it was all or nothing to get open. <laughs> so <laughs> that's which is always uh, at the end of the shift when you're walking in to get changed, you're like, literally can't see anything in there. It's atmospheric, <laughs> isn't it? You go, it's an atmospheric toilet trip. It was like, we, we have to get open and no one would touch it. Then I bought four 20 meter extension cables and drilled a hole in the in the floor from upstairs and uh, wired my own power to the kitchen. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're gonna have to edit this back. <laughs> 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 um, HSC are listening, <laughs> Megs are listening. Um, but thankfully, we do have other certified electrician who we work with. Yes, uh, yes, so everything's cool. <laughs> <shows. everything's good laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but why was there no window? I don't, the <laughs> there's no window because we couldn't get the kitchen equipment in or out of oh. the building um so yeah uh, rush now so the rush we're we go through the, the door through like the door. you know that the, this you know that little step up uh it, you know at frederick street is uh it's it's hazardous like yeah. well, it was for the electrician yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hard but yeah trying to get a rashi up and then that sharp right to go into the kit like yeah. into uh tiara yeah things as well fridges. yeah fridges been going so yeah, yeah take the window out and then like and then you're waiting on the on the glazer coming in and getting the right glass and we're like yes and folk are gonna be here in an hour uh you might wanna you might wanna fucking hurry up was, this, a bit was this winter or summer Some, yeah it was so like at least it wasn't gonna be freezing yeah. if you had yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we had like new chefs who was starting that day. So the two chefs had already worked for us a little bit. He would probably by then used to our bullshit. Yeah, because yeah, the other ones had done all the, like, the, the pop-up had... stuff. So they were like, yeah, so. <laughs> they had absolutely, then there was two that had absolutely no idea. And they were literally like, you're like, right, you're, you're cooking upstairs. They're like, what? It's like, yeah, you're cooking downstairs. <laughs> and we're going to radio between each other to each other. Yeah. And then it's like. <laughs> I think I was upstairs because because obviously there wasn't enough juice. Like the solid tops, the flat tops for the tacos, they, they take a lot of power. Mm. So like if we put all that in, it'll just blow downstairs. Like, I mean, don't have, the spark is not coming back. So we'll take that upstairs. So just fill in the, um, the ta like, you know, the taco steamer bag, like, yeah. And then running it downstairs. There you go, guys. Need some more. <laughs> yep. <laughs> back up I go. They, they turned up at like three or something. And we're like, right, we need you to assemble these chairs and tables. And these guys are thinking... I'm a fucking chef. Are you telling to are you, are you telling to assemble chairs and tables? And like, well, you know, we need some other people to sit. So. I've definitely done a few friends and family nights where there's been like no tables and stuff like that. Could just <laughs> sit in there eating on that laps and stuff. We had to borrow chairs for Trentina from the uh, from St Paul's house, so people were sat on outdoor furniture. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's like you've got everything ordered. And then suddenly you get an email, we're like, oh, sorry, it's going to be another six weeks. And you're like, cool. <laughs> it's funny because so many people would be thinking, oh, I'd like to open a restaurant, but this would have to be perfect. This would have to be perfect. And it, so oh, many people sure. probably wouldn't do it because, yeah. and it, you've just got to have a go. Really. We didn't have like, an oven at maybe not so much for six months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And the thing as well is that people, everyone was behind from COVID still. Then even these big name, like, Best in the business um, equipment manufacturers were throwing out absolute rubbish as well, and you were still paying like over the odds for stuff. And they just they were rushing through stuff, and we've like had constant repairs to pretty much every piece of equipment in there since we've since we've been there. And um, this was stuff that we waited six six months behind. So we literally yeah, chefs so are like, have you have you ordered this? And you're like, you know, showing them email like. Yes, yes, we have. And we spent a lot of money on it. And yes, it's going to be another three months until it arrives. <laughs> Jeez. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No one can be a perfectionist if they're going to open a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, they're, they're going to be waiting a long time. They're going to need a good good year or two months rent, yeah. year or two rent free from the, uh, for sure. from the landlord if they're going to wait for uh well, That's the thing, because we've always just been like, you know, get it, get it close enough. And then it's our money, which there isn't any of so no opening especially when you've hired you've got a team and stuff like that you will either open and pay people or don't what's the what's the choice here just go for it yeah just just yeah drill a hole in the floor <laughs> <laughs> run some lecky through it let's crack on 
fucking give the uh, give the glazer a kick up the arse and a bit of a hand, then we'll just fucking get that glass in <laughs> and then get open. You know, it's that sort of thing. We yeah. have Bowie City Council being like, "Are we all right if we can put this application back by two weeks?" And you're like, "No, no." no. <laughs> like, well, we haven't kind of got round to it. I'm like, that sounds like a you problem. Yeah. <laughs> we're opening tomorrow, and they're like, and they're like. Oh no, we found it. We found a problem with your application, and then you send it back thirty seconds later, and they're like, "Oh, um, what's that there?" It's like that's a fan, you know, that's a fan. Stop picking holes in the application, <laughs> and then eventually they're just like, "Okay, yeah, fine, yeah, we, we've, we've had a chance to look at it." You're like, "We're opening tomorrow," <laughs> like we're not. You can't just put it back to it because you've not got around to it. Like the staff started to work, you know, orders have been placed, people are coming. Mm. You know, you know if, if you just got have got a roll with it, haven't you? You feel like more people should just go for it. I mean, if you go back to this place and Carl and the amount of people that came from here and just went for it and opened their own place and the amount of cool for shit sure. that we've got now yeah. because of that. I mean, that, like as we touched on earlier, I mean, that's the great thing now that like we've got so many, so many friends who are, who have venues and we've and I've been doing this for like six years now. Um, we've learned off folk who have opened before us. There was obviously, there was a lot of us opened around about the same time. Well, obviously Bonehead was similar sort of time to us wolf, wolf, wolf yeah, yeah 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 Arch, few, yeah things it seemed yeah. like everything seemed to happen all at once yeah. didn't it sure so there was like that sort of rush and then obviously there's been other folk like and then been able to talk to folk about it they're coming in and been like i'll just pick your brains about this for a minute or have you got a number for someone who could actually be helpful with x y or z problem type thing like it's always holes in floors <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's always good to be able to help out in that regard. Each one is different. I think that's like what I always take away from like every open something something horrendous goes horribly wrong. And it's just it's just roll with it and like how can you how can you make it work? So yeah. It's good it's good fun. Well it's fair to say they're fairly smallish venues. Sure. So you fancied something massive in I think it was just <laughs> it's just a it was just a heart strings with here, I think, because we because obviously we come here a lot before either of us had worked here. In the time that we, like, especially in the last, uh, well, since Carl took over, really, it's been such like a sort of an institution here. Yeah. And so many great people have, have worked through here and all the rest of it. When we saw it, it was on the market, we were like, <laughs> Fuck Started it, twitching, you well, know. Yeah, because we're, cause we're, cause we're looking at it and then we had sort of Trentina up the sleeve as well at the same time. And uh, this idea was like, nah, it'd be fine. We'll get Trentina done in like two months. <laughs> We've got plenty of time before before the charts. I feel like I shouldn't remind you that Chikatao was supposed to come before the charts as well. Oh, okay. okay. At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that just, should have just been to keep, yeah, actually, really. yeah, just to throw in an extra venue in there. Trentina oh, is yeah. supposed to be a quick one. Yeah, just a quick yeah, yeah. Chickadee was supposed to be down there. Like, cool. Yeah, how was it? Yeah, that was original. Yeah, we yeah. got quite far with that. Like, kind of inspect out and whatnot. That was that was going to be a beast. That was like yeah. kept going, push back, push back, push back on that. And then, then we were like, so instead of that, we did Trentina, which was supposed to be like quick one month turnaround, flip it, get it work, get it open. And then yeah, we were supposed to do Chickadee next door. On the half how many street. how many covers did you have on the bar? There's 24 covers at the bar, yeah. All <laughs> sat on a sat at the bar, and then uh, I can't remember. There maybe 20 20 sat at seats, and then yeah. all along the front as well. Um, and that was yeah, that was supposed to be, yep, <laughs> just after Trentina, and then obviously the church came along instead. That could could push and push back, push back, push back. Yeah, because we went and did, went over to Leicester and did our our sales pitch. And uh, and yeah, it's yeah, just riffing on sort of like what our sort of positive experiences had been and what we thought it could do, and you know, like what the vision was and the rest of it. So, finish that, like, you know, big finale, and then look over and like, it was Tommy and Matt was yeah. way queuing up for like to have it to have their pitch next. It was just like, I think there's quite a few army on people that went and had a chat with them. And uh, yeah, no, it's one of them. And uh, like, you love love the venue, love the space. It's, it's capable of so much. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a challenge. Yeah, but uh, I think one of the biggest ones is that a lot of people don't realise that there was time between us and Soul Food as well, which is so frustrating because we spent so much time in the front bar bringing all the features back, 
like literally like hands and knees, like going back to the wood from this like horrible gloss, mm. white gloss gray, like flashing lights in the ceiling. Like, and like we, people are like, why, why did you rip out the back bar? And we're like, we didn't rip out the back bar. <laughs> yeah. like, there was someone between, oh, it used to be beautiful, but this, and we're like, we know, like we, we, yeah. <laughs> we're as gutted as you. <laughs> like, you know, the, the people don't realize that there was this gap where like, we came in a few times, scoping it out. And, like, didn't feel comfortable on, being was, here. Like, it was big sad. Mm, that was like, that. The fridge was turned off, and they were like, "Oh, they were like, so Max got offered a bottle of beer with some ice because the fridge wasn't on." Is that? Jeez. And then they were like, "Oh, is that is that something you do?" And we were like, "No, and no, <laughs> no one's ever done that, like in the history of beer." <laughs> like, so yeah, and like that's it. But yeah, that's that, that like gap that people don't. Like some people, some people don't realise, and it's and it's just like you, know, you try and um, we all we've done is try and bring it back to its former glory where we can really without you know an infinite amount of money and really from no kind of like brewery influence on it at all. Really, we flipped the front bar in two weeks. There's six or seven of us, and um, mm. and literally we we were like uh, heat gunning paint off where it was sort of these beautiful features to get them back to like almost back to what they were and like yeah there's stuff that we still like you know we still would like to do but again as they all said it's pubs these days is a bit of a challenge and especially like when you're tied to a brewery as well um yeah it's a it's an absolute different beast to everywhere else for sure <laughs> yeah very much so i was gonna say you can get two of the venues just in this room <laughs> yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a toilet yeah <laughs> Did you feel pressure because of what what this had been before? Yeah, a little bit, I guess. There's like obviously uh, in terms of like the you know the people still talk about the ribs from before from Soul Food, like, and they we've discussed it a few times. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. But we <laughs> like we kind of like discussed you know doing doing a rib night, and it, I don't feel it's it's out of place because Neil was head chef here and he did write the menu, you know. I don't think that's disrespectful to anyone previous, but as such, and it's always going to be a nod towards what came before, you know, it's not. So that, I guess in some ways there is that, but, and there are people that used to drink here, obviously back in the day, mm -hmm. who who were like, why have you ripped this out? Why have you, what have you done with this? And like, you know, what, what's what happened to this? And it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be different. Yeah, but, like each venue evolves over time. Yeah, I think we've still got, you know, Good offering of, of the cocktails, beers, the customer service. We're definitely something we're really proud of here. There is more competition as well in the jewelry quarter now. Um, and From to, ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and to, you know, keep that, uh, yeah, keep it, keep it growing and keep it growing as well is, is nice. And I think people will definitely come back for the staff. We've managed to kind of do a bit of negotiation. So we've got the attic stuff on cask and keg because if you've got a Leicester-based brewery, it doesn't really mean anything to anyone in Birmingham. Mm, so no. you go into the Wolf and you've got six beers there that all mean something to you because you're like Glasshouse, Attic, and then you're like, even like nothing bound, Worcester way, like Burning Soul, you're like, there's always a point of reference, which is normally intuition. <laughs> For anyone in yeah. Birmingham, <laughs> it's normally everyone's point of it's reference. It's like a sign of good quality. As soon as I go oh, in a bar, if yeah. I see intuition on the tap, I'm like, right, they're, they're serious. Yeah, it's just like the fucking <laughs> tap water here, isn't it? <laughs> so you... <laughs> We managed to like, it, to be fair, that's something as well that the brewery kind of highlighted and they said like, you know, if obviously if you're in Leicester and you're going to a pub and you're like, oh, all these beers that are on in 20 pubs in Leicester and you think this is like the same as walking in and seeing intuition here, but we're not in Leicester. We're essentially in Hockley. Have been able to put on intuition forward, like the attic cask has made a big difference for us. Mm. They've been able to support and say, you know, this is, just made down the road in Sturgisley and um, yeah, we sell a lot of intuition basically, like, as everyone does. And then having the uh, barrel store nearby as well, it creates that nice little loop as well. When you're, we're tied to a brewery from Leicester, we, you have your hands tied a little bit in terms of what beers you can put on. And people might expect us to have something a bit more interesting because we've never had mainstream beers on in any of the venues. You know, We've always worked with like with new beers or beers that people have never heard of is to match the kind of cuisine and keep it interesting and where we haven't been able to get like a mexican beer on at uh at sierra for example we've got a basically like an unknown like just re like reinvigorated spanish brewery from like 1930s and people are like 
and so like someone pointed out to me came in and they were like we're expecting like different beers and like more interesting stuff and kind of your hands are tied on that a little bit so mm. you've got to kind of put your personality on there with the customer service with like the food offering and then yeah thankfully we managed to get a bit of the help with attic from that and we kind of it makes us fit in a little bit more as well yeah. you know in the bedroom <laughs> you know like, for sure we would really love to do more with other local producers as well but it's literally yeah it's just the nature of the game um so we have to kind of do what do what we can really so how would you describe the food here yeah, it's really, really classic puppy. It's a funny one with the pub game, isn't it? Because you've got to like appeal to everyone, like because it's so much more multi usage. Someone who's coming in on a Sunday for a roast is totally different than someone who's coming in for a few pints on a Friday night, like, and then everything in between that, you know, whether it's a couple of cocktails or it's a glass of wine and some small plays. It's mo modern gastro pubby type stuff, but, I, you know, with a strong British accent but it needs to be accessible and useful to everyone yeah there's people like on the sunday roast thing the people that come in on a sunday for a roast like we, you just they, you won't see them in the week like yeah. you could give them a free meal he's like come in on tuesday you can have a free meal they were like they, no they, they wouldn't come they're like the roast is great but when you come up no you're like yeah. <laughs> fucking blows your mind it's like yeah people come in from out of town we had people the table come up and they were like, some of them were coming up from London and hadn't booked. And we were like, why would you not book? Like, and we're obviously Sundays, <laughs> it's, it's a massive thing. And we, we've had some weird ones recently. We had a table of 17 walking at six o'clock on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, uh, no call, nothing. Uh, just calls. Just say, uh, it's just, and then it was, uh, Jesus. And then the same thing happened with a phone call, but it was 22 people. Again, and it was not uh, the same day. No, no, no. It was, it was, <laughs> it was only two weeks apart. different, wasn't it? And there was one, one lady on the front front bar at that point, and one chef in the kitchen. Yeah, but at that point you're at like, point. you know, you've only got a bit left, starting to wind it down. Like everyone's been in, <laughs> and then yeah, um, do you mind? There's 22 of us. We're going to be here half an hour. <laughs> That's out. Good. How did they decide that they just wanted to go? Like, I, d I don't know. Maybe they've never ever been to a restaurant before. <laughs> 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 That's, That's the insane. only answer. <laughs> is that they've never eaten in a restaurant before. That's I, quite impressive, though. That if you get 22 people to decide on one place, that, that kind <laughs> yeah, of spontaneous. <laughs> Where should we get to now? I don't know. Maybe it's the type of thing they've been trying to like pick somewhere <laughs> since Friday night. And everybody... yeah. Right, finally, we spent the whole weekend in the hotel. Where are we going to go? We're always thinking, like, you're thinking, right, who's letting down? Who's it like? Where have they booked? Yeah. And who's letting yeah, down? Yeah. And we always make a point of having food till like seven. Because like some people like coming for a roast, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning. Mm. It's a point sure. of difference as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, like we try to accommodate all the people. But yeah, <laughs> there's, like Neil said, it's, Sunday is um, a completely different beast in itself and it's something that in terms of quality control we've got to be just just hot on all the time like and that starts on like on a Wednesday and it's like literally there'll be days when I've just messaged Neil I'll be like you just go in and try the gravy on Friday for sure. you'll be like yeah you know, check, mm. check the stock we'll check the stock or it'll be like just give the cheese sauce a place for the qualifier cheese and obviously everything starts the process starts on like Wednesday if we're peeling veg get the bones on to roast for the gravy it's all little little things like that that obviously sometimes people are look at a price tag of a roast and they they don't really get their heads around it but you've yeah. like and it's not it's, the like, kettle hasn't gone on and plonked into some beast or like yeah, it, yeah, this yeah. Is a, it's, take yeah. some work yeah for sure for sure and that's then that's the thing and but yeah like i think for a while we gave people 25 percent off if they came back in the week i don't think anyone ever bought one of those discount cards back and um, then in, the people in the week are completely different. Like Thursdays for the quiz, you get a lot of people having small plates and stuff like that. And then you get people, couples coming in for food and stuff like that. I think this is like, I mean, obviously Sunday roast aside, this is the one that doesn't have that like core dish that the rest of the menu builds out from. Mm. Right? So it caused it, it caused the nature of it. Yeah. When we were talking to, to the brewery, it was very much like mm. envisage your pint next to a bang and roast. And obviously that is Sunday. But like, you know, you still got to like offer those those different bits during the rest of the week, as opposed to the other ones where it's like, I mean, obviously Tierra, Tierra was the, the pastor. Like we wanted to get the rotisserie in to be able to do a, a proper pastor and uh, and then like a banging, banging margarita and actually having nice tequila. 
rather than like you know you go in the chain places and you know and you know it's going to be some of some of the worst tequila ever yeah well, ever when you still i remember the first time i tried a really good tequila and i was like this is like a different thing altogether. Pretty like right. it's insane and then you try mezcal and you're like oh hang on let's get it yeah <laughs> well, this is uh this guy tom that um we work with tom barson who does like the speciality uh spirits and um we did a take it's just uh the three of us upstairs at tierra and he was like you're not really going to use any of this like you know we had like a bit of upstairs um but like some of the stuff he had was mad like the flavor profiles yeah. were incredible like from like the different branches of the different agave spirits mm. it's like this one is from yucatan jungle area so you get this really vegetable bit but it's like the jungle that's next to the sea so there was a massive like like saline element to it and i'm yeah. like you're like so you're gonna taste this mint salt jalapeno and you're like yeah bang on <laughs> you're like how's just one liquid just giving me yeah. sure that three those three different flavors in like a couple of seconds like yeah. with and there's no mint in it there's no salt in it there's no jalapeno in it like it's just a mezcal yeah and it's so it's stuff like that that you just like and yet 99 percent of people just know Salt on the hand. <laughs> don't go in. Lemon, don't go in. And then just some either. horrible taste in liquid. I mean, obviously, we get asked about it quite a lot. Like, we are at some stage gonna find a find a home for Tierra that actually actually fits it. Um, it's always gonna be because it's not where it was, is it? No. Um, yeah. Basically, basically, put in uh, one hundred and eighty, one hundred and ninety covers on a Saturday through a kitchen that was a greasy spoon <laughs> um and hasn't been retrofitted properly is not a good idea because it ends up starts to get a bit a bit knackered and ed and i spend a lot of our times in the kitchen not just like popping in and taste stuff but on chip like we are generally there at the at the coal face so like if it starts to be fucked i don't want to work in that i don't want staff working in it so that was sort of where, where we got to it's like ceiling needed some work the floor needed some work what are you gonna do like to close and be able to fix that takes weeks yeah. so it's just like right well we can't close for four weeks six weeks eight weeks till this gets fixed so just pause it put it on hiatus you know it's not going anywhere keep the site and then it gives us a bit of breathing space to fix the kitchen properly how we want it um, but like we knew we'd never go back with Tierra into there. We know now that beast needs the venue that's going to fit it. So yeah, looking at something a bit chunkier, <laughs> but something that we can go from like from the ground up because because the service style and the, the flow in the kitchen and stuff is different than what we're than what we have in a lot of other venues, especially if we take over another like pre-existing venue. Like it just everything works differently. If there's a new build that really like suits it, then yeah, you go move into there. Yeah, yeah, and really like you know, throw all the weight behind making that because it was really good. Like people, yeah, really, it was really great. Loved food, really good. Yeah, um, but yeah, just being able to do that properly, and yeah, it was nice. Like give us a bit of a bit of breathing space, and then yeah, obviously Ed's been itching to do chicky tail since <laughs> before, before before then. Um, so it just made sense, like get the kitchen right, and then it was like, well, if we're gonna change, you know, start from scratch, knock it all down, build it back up again, make it for that, because you know there's a big Conroe grill to do all everything over coals, and um, yeah, in the pizza oven and stuff, we're doing the flatbreads and whatnot. So it's actually set how it should be for that food. Make it a bit smaller, a bit intimate, and then uh, kitchen board is not in a cupboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that sort of thing. Like, yeah, actually, what? And then having having Rob and Kendra upstairs doing their thing, I think it really adds something to 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 well to the say because they're amazing. Um, but yeah, like fortunate, really fortunate to have them as as our neighbors. You've got a night out all in one venue, haven't you? You've got cocktails upstairs. Oh, for sure. I, like, I, I, um, I, I did a uh, front of house disco shift on, on Friday because uh, needs needs must. So <laughs> got my waiter pad and my pen out and like went and schmoozed some people in front of house. And, you know, it's just like, what are you guys doing? And, like, they'd either been upstairs or were going to. And if they weren't, I was like, you're making a really big mistake on your Friday night if you're not going upstairs because it is incredible. 
Um, so yeah, it's all for uh, well, that's it. And thousand trades over the road yeah. as well. It's yeah. like just three, <laughs> yeah. just three great places. All like yeah, I mean that's yeah. We used to send loads of folk over like yeah. and from Tierra like when we were like had their table waiting and be like, give us your phone number. We'll we'll text you when your table for they just go over at trades and and I join for a bit and sink a couple of bags. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time we went outside and it was summer and we didn't take bookings at Tierra and everyone was waiting for a table. The first time we went outside and every single table outside of a thousand trays were all waiting to come into Tierra. And then uh, we were like, okay, I have to do bookings now. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> just looking at <laughs> you with that. Like, <laughs> and we're next. And I spoke to John for a thousand trays and we drank there for years and purely just drank. Like, we pitched a couple of business ideas to him before and it's never got off the ground, but we just drank there and enjoyed drinking there. We, you know, for a long time, like it was where we go after shift and, um, sometimes till six in the morning <laughs> and like we were like back in the day it was a bit maybe more marmite for people as well there there was fried friends that would not want to go there at all but we always we always loved it and we always wanted to go there i think people have slowly realized what an asset it is to How the city people not want to go there it's, no, it's, it's an incredible place i don't understand it but it's kind of like killed it it's got everything you need and in one place and everything's always good there's nothing shit. Mm. Mm. everything's everything's good like if you want to drink wine, the drink, you're going to drink great wine. If you want to drink great beer, you're going to drink great beer. They've got three different German lagers on. If you want to drink lager, drink the best lager in the city. Yeah. You know, there's no San Miguel, there's no Carlsberg, there's no Carlin. But you've got a choice of three bangings. Not even any tenants. <laughs> like, you know, there's... A tenant super. <laughs> <laughs> Some vitamin <pet> tea. <laughs> yeah, like the, um, I went over and I said to John, I was like, everyone in here is waiting to go to Tierra. It's like, well, what do you fucking want? Pop a cut of the money, do you? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm just saying. It's quite <laughs> almost wild. He's like, well, what do you want then? I was like, and then a couple of days later, we ran out of tomato juice. I went over and said, can I borrow the tomato juice? He says, you can have that. <laughs> that's, that's, your, that's, your, that's your cut. I said, right. <laughs> the first time we went there to look at it, I went with the guy that worked for us who was going to be front of, uh, like front of house manager. And um, we went there to view it and we opened the door. And John was on the doorstep as he quite often is, and he looked across the way and he's like, Oh, fucking hell, is it you? You're not going in there. And we were like, I was like, Yeah, yeah. he started like flicking the V's at us across the road. And I was like, well, This is perfectly normal. You know, this is perfectly normal behavior for John. And we got inside, and this, this guy goes, What have you done to piss off over the road? Like, we can't, like, we can't be, you know, not be friends with the neighbors. Like, he seems to hate us. And I was like, no, no, that's just John. That's just how he behaves. <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's pretty normal. He does that to his regular customers. <laughs> and he's, she's just like, oh God. And I, she was really stressed about it. I was like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. That's just John. You'll come to know and love him. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, that's that kind of little triangle there is kind of like, people would come way to trades, come into Tierra, and then they go straight back to trades afterwards. You know, sure. And then you'd finish. And then f trades would be full of people that had been in Tierra. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, you said this, or you cooked our food. And, you know, that started to happen more now with chicken tail as well. Upstairs. You stink of smoke. You must have picked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is nice, and it is a good little, I mean, I don't think there's many, like, cooler buildings where what, what stands there is like, oh, it's a Spanish small plate. It's like cooked over coal cigar. Oh, so what have they got, like a bar upstairs? No, no, it's a Japanese cocktail bar upstairs. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, in the same building. Yeah. Like, do you know, it just doesn't really, I don't think there's many places that can no, not claim as a, to have that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not as a, not as a double up. That's a, yeah. What's the hero product that um, Chikata? They use something about the um, margarita and the... Um, wine. <laughs> 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 um, I think the... I mean, this is Ed's baby. I don't know. What's the hero product? It's like it's... Uh, I think it's more, that's more about like the concept, uh, to be honest, than the way that people should approach it. And I've been fairly vocal in uh, hunting down people that call it a tapas bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you surefire away, making it to the top of my shit list is calling it a tapas <laughs> or a tapas restaurant. Um, <laughs> something that I have a right on my head. <laughs> quickly <laughs> crosses <it> out. <laughs> Just don't mention it to you, Wilder, right? Um, and it's something I kind of spoke to Tom from IG about when he came in. I was just like, 
ev- uh, everywhere does batatas bravas, all by one, slug and lettuce, chorizo and red wine, calamari, like, I don't know, maybe whether spoons it, but like, all by ones, you're slug and lettuce, everything like that, your gastro pubs. Like, for a long time, time as well. Like, yeah. For a long time, have been doing it. Uh, and it's this, always shit. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> like, and uh, he just wanted to do something different. And like what we have eaten in Spain, like again, use, letting the produce sing for something like for itself. Very much not overcomplicated. Not overcomplicated. And if, like the ability for people to treat it how they want to treat it. But if they do want to come and have a selection of small plates with a glass of wine with their friends and not call it tapas, then that's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to come in and have a 900 gram uh, steak, like basically rib- bone and ribeye. To yourself uh, with a to, glass of wine. <laughs> to yourself with a glass of wine, you're even more welcome. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think maybe in terms of products, the, the pork chop with the Pedro Jimenez sauce is probably the one that shines out. But it's how you kind of build that sure. into your meal as well, which is a, a good one, and which is like a kind of, you know, there's a lot of like pork chop leeks, potatoes, and it's, you want to send food as it's ready, but then there's also, you like Neil was a bit obsessed with sending it like how it eats, which isn't very like Spanish, but it's a bit more like thought of. And you're like, if you've got a check and it's like pork chop, potatoes and leeks, someone wants that as a meal. They basically sure. want that on the same plate. Yeah. <laughs> they put it on three separate plates because we're <laughs> not it's a tapas restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, there's that kind of, um, how you how you anticipate the check and yeah you do get people that obviously just come in and um it's like small plate small plate small plate and obviously we buy in the the meat from Dunwood Farm and we have we have it on the walls so you count down how many is left of everything so we always start the start the week with um with a certain amount of different sizes and weights and stuff like that we do like sardines by the weight as well so if you want to come and eat kilo sardines you can have a kilo of sardines if you want to just get 100 grams try it for the first time you know you can do that we did that with mussels as well so you know, some people have a half a kilo steaming bowl of mussels in front of them. Some people build it into their selection of Spanish wall plates, not tapas. And um, so, you know, the that kind of by the weight freedom. So you, if you do want to come in, this is high welfare, 28 aged salt aged meat from a pretty much as local as we can get. And it's someone that works with pretty much every restaurant worth their weight across Birmingham, you know, but to kind of do an accessible size of stuff is where we kind of want to be. But if you do want to come in, table of four, table of six, and get you know, a kilo of bowling rib, then you know there's one of those every week. And if you want to guarantee it, then Thursday, Thursday evening, and then we turn like we try, yeah, all, <laughs> all, all it coming, basically. But yeah, we've like it's just kind of kick since we've opened bookings two two three weeks ago. It's kind of kicked off, and this week was the first week where on Friday I was begging. Done with farm to come drive down on Saturday. Um, <laughs> Got nothing. Left. I, was like, I was like, please, guys, if anyone is driving anywhere near Birmingham, I think they do Solihull on a Saturday, but they don't really like to come into Birmingham on a Saturday, which is understandable. Um, from if you do, you know, if you're driving all week and there is set delivery days that we do adhere to, um, most of the time, most of the time. <laughs> But sometimes you do need a load of bone and ribeyes delivering because <laughs> you've got nothing. Um, Not something you could just pop to Tesco for. It doesn't yeah. really, doesn't really nah. work in the same, does it? So, yeah, there's, <laughs> that's like, and so if you, the, the fact that people can treat that, and I think that there is that element as well in Birmingham where people have struggled for a long time to get a good steak, which is not something that always what we were aiming to do as such. But yeah, without it being like, we just do steak because obviously yeah. you know like those like Paul yes Bian, yeah. and Paul Perea, um but obviously there's a few that have also been and gone um because you know, there was like obviously a lot more like that's all you know but not all we do but like that's the focus yeah i like you know i was saying about the hero thing like you know obviously like jokingly about it being wine but that's sort of that's much more of the starting point was like how interesting and creative spanish wine is yeah we really love it and there's like loads and loads of different styles and grapes and stuff like that, that people may not really know or have had before and stuff like that so if you know if we can get them in with a bit of that but then also have food that really like is simple but shines and is authentic but is using british stuff that happy mix for us yeah not flying stuff around the world <laughs> yeah. you know we trentino we 
we have British made mozzarella, burrata, you know, anything like that is British made. Charcuterie. Uh, charcuterie from Cobble Lane. We, we like tried. Yeah, we're the saltiest day ever where we got like half a dozen different British charcuterie forms, different selections and stuff. And like, obviously, like pairing them up. So, like, here's someone's older fennel slammy or whatever, or here's older hamon and like trying them all. Christ am I, that was, yeah, the amount of pints of water after that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we got to Cobble and we're like, cool, that is, that is the bee's knees. Cobble Lane actually was the best in each charcuterie that we tried, mm. which is for one producer to kind of Nail tickle it. those boxes yeah, yeah. Mm. across the board is crazy. So, and since then, it's something that we try and let the customers know about. You know? Yeah. Even with Tiger, like, obviously it's a bit different, like in terms of like, where we get all our produce and stuff from, but for the flower for the bow for years, we go to Wing Yip like every week and we get in, you know, 25 kilo sacks of the bow flower and then like COVID, Ukraine, etc. Like obviously there's a lot of supply issues and we're like, this is mental. Why are we getting flour that's have to be shipped halfway around the world? And so we get from ship to mill from the Cotswolds. It's like hydro mill, organic, like great product and you know, it hasn't, it's traveled 40 miles now. <laughs> yeah. 40, miles. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, they, have we actually reached out to them and we were like, well, what we need something to make, to make bow with, we want to use your products. And straight away they, they like put us in the right direction, which is actually cake flour. Um, and I was speaking to them today and they were saying that they had, they've got some other people that make bow and their problem was that they wouldn't bleach the flour for them. And they were like, is that a problem for you? I'm like, no, like Tiger's like, there's a restaurant where you're stood in front of the chef and if someone's like, if someone wants, would rather their, what they're eating was bleached versus it being a bit grayer than white. I was like, that tiger's the perfect <laughs> restaurant to say, explain you're in the wrong place there and explain why it's A, not perfectly formed and because we've made it and B, why it's not bright white because we've made it and it's not been bleached. And they were saying that to get it to the same color of white that people wanted, they'd have to throw away 55% of the flour to get it to that as that white. And they've got nothing they can do with that off with the waste from that. So there's nothing they, they can't do anything with that. So they, they did have, they did say no to these people that, that wanted it, but yeah, they said four or five producers, um, of power had asked them for like bleached or as white as they could get it. And, you know, they'd have to throw away 55% of the flour to get it this wine. Um, so they were quite happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're like, no, we're fine. It's all good. Yeah. Just a wasteland. Like, oh, yeah. waste. But just something visual as well. It doesn't. So visual. Like, and it's, yes. again, like. It doesn't affect the flavour at all. And you can see that it's homemade. But it's, the, the, it's night and day when you're looking at a, a picture of a bow, you know, a new place comes along and they're like, oh, we've got power. And straight from the first picture, you can see whether it's homemade or not. Mm. Yeah, you get those little sad, thin lipped bow in your lap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be crap. <laughs> well, got, we're, we're coming up to two hours, you know. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool though. I don't mind. <laughs> well, I'll keep this, I'll, I'll cherry pick some of these questions. Yeah, 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 we'll just do a little, do, yeah, just, little quick fire. We'll just do a quick yeah. round, they're never yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never. it's just a fun way to end the podcast. What's your favorite TV show? Uh, recently, The Gentleman, I think, is unreal. Is it good? I haven't seen it. Oh, it's. I, I actually don't watch a lot of series or TV, but it's uh, probably yeah one of the best things I've seen in a long time. Oh, wow. Yourself? The thick of it. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? I'll come. It's just like, it's one of them characters. It's probably one of the greatest ever TV characters. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine him just walking in now, you'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Even as an actor, I think he just probably walks into places and people are naturally just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> your favourite movie? Um, I'll present Drain's Party, but it's actually The Lion King. So. <laughs> <laughs> no qualms with that. Everyone knows it's on my playlist. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut up that. It's like, is it Apocalypse Now? Is it The Bruce Bars? Is it Jaws? Is it Ratatouille? Like, you know, there's... Mm. There's a lot of options. Well, <laughs> just like, you know, like, how, how, how serious are you feeling? How's your baby? Well, I don't yeah. think it should ever be, I don't think your favourite film should be a serious choice, really. 
I think it's something you put on and you just absolutely. Well, yeah, can't I mean, I think like my dad put it. the blues buzz on when I was like seven or something, and obviously like that feeds into like your musical influence and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a fucking batshit crazy film, mostly because they're all done a shitload of cocaine. <laughs> But like that's <laughs> yeah. you know like it feeds into the rest of your life and like I was you know you end up watching it like a million times because you know you're those I'm sure you guys know annoying level of kids who just put the same thing <laughs> on constantly. Yeah. So yeah. I bet my old man was regretting that. But yeah. What's your favourite big fast food chain? <laughs> favourite big fast um, five guys. Yeah. Five Guys a is a five very guys popular yeah. choice. It's yeah. good. It's yeah. good. I don't care when I say Five Guys, the burgers People are good. People think it's overpriced. You don't get anything for 11 quid now these days. You don't no. get a pain in the restaurant for 50. It's the fact that you just pick, you make your own burger up. If it's crap, sure. you made the wrong choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> Yeah, it's a main expert green bit. Yeah, it? yeah. It, you know, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm feeling hungry and actually want something that's not going to be total dog shit, then yeah, Five Guys. If I'm feeling fucking really sad and hungover, get me a double cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well in on this one. What's your favourite food destination in the whole world? Uh, well, I went to uh, went to MSCR last year for my fortieth. Mr. Chef took me, and it was yeah, it's unreal. Did I speak to you about? Uh, I think so I went as well for my fault if last yeah. <laughs> yeah like I mean what guys does say us wild like um, yeah <laughs> having 29 courses of, of mayhem is, yeah. so, and, and you like you know we are talking earlier about like our venues especially Tiger and like the vibe and stuff like that is so important and to go and have like that level of, uh, of food but it'd be totally chill like you know, I know some of the guys there, like Rory and stuff like that. So it almost felt like you were just like hanging out, but <laughs> hanging out at the world's best barbecue. Yeah. What's uh, your me, favorite place? Pretty much anywhere by the seaside. Put me by the seaside. <laughs> Any coastal some, yeah. town. Give me a Coney coastal town. Give me some mussels, some fish, nice little salad on the side. I'm easily satisfied. Ridland, right? Ridland Fins in Brighton. If you want a specific place, but yeah. Any, yeah, because you went to your theater. Yeah, we went to my theater. Brian, I haven't been to Brian. Have you been to Brian? You've never been to Brian. I've been to Brian. Oh my god! Everyone says so. Jeff, what are you doing? Just like what you doing? It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Well, I've learned something during his questions. I oh, know. We went on a bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks very much for your time. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the story. I loved good. it. Enjoy it. Thank you. So there we have it. We are flying through these episodes now, mate. I know, yeah. Yeah, Ed and Neil, awesome guests. Quite, we should have mentioned quite a long episode, man. But lucky enough, YouTube splits it into chapters for you now, which is handy. Yeah, you I know. So it looks good. That. Yeah, it's good how they do that. That's very handy for us. Sometimes our episodes do one for an hour and a half, <laughs> two hours. Every one of them brilliant. So, yeah, thanks again for the lads. Thanks to our sponsors, Easy Food, Burning Barn Rum, obviously, Go check out the links in the show notes. Massive thank you to them. And thanks most of all to you, the listeners, watchers. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't sound right. It's saying watchers, does it? The watchers. Thanks for watching, listening, whatever you did. And remember, help us out, tell a friend, send the link. We would really appreciate it. See you next week for our oh, mega episode with Lydia. She's owner of St. Kitchen, Warwick, Saint, Warwick Street Kitchen in Leamington. Just a great business mind. Yeah. See you next week.